And nigga, be real to yourself before you real with anybody else. What's the deal, baby? <laughs> That's all right. They like, boy, that, that boy need a boy. That boy go on that line, boy. That boy be going in there with them things, man. <laughs> all right, y'all. So look, man, we got some new uh detail to, you know, the Tupac murder. Um, it's a lot of key components. Like I said, this situation, man, look. Only people that's gonna actually know is it's it's so crazy because when you look at the game, you really going down a rabbit hole because it's once you are like, oh, that's what happened. Then you gotta hit a U-turn, double right back, hit a left, it's over there in the corner, and it's everywhere, it's all over the place. But first of all, I gotta give a big shout out to OG Gene, man. You know what I'm saying? Gene Deal, you know what I'm saying? Yo, hey, hey, the niggas, the niggas. Nigga, 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 nigga said, nigga, I, nigga, I'm just a gentleman. You understand me? But nigga, if, if that's what a gangster is, then nigga, I'm a motherfucking gangster. <laughs> hey, hey, I appreciate the call, big dog. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He was like, he was like, yo, so like, hey, Gene ain't no joke. Shout out to the super chat, man. Run them super chats up, baby. Hey, hey, I got nothing but respect for Gene, man. We had a little nice little talk, man, and I'm definitely gonna pick his brain. Um when I say it was crazy because, you know, Gene got the story, nigga, nigga, G, to me, the way Gene would tell some story, nigga, nigga was like a nigga, nigga, a ghetto Rambo and shit, nigga, like, nigga, you got a gun, he's like, hell yeah, nigga, I got one right here, one right here, nigga, one right here, shit, probably one right, just elaborate, Gene, I'm like, nigga, I, <laughs> nigga, Gene be like, oh, no, nah, yo, son, <laughs> nigga, hey, nigga, I had him in the trench coat and the suit, <laughs> fucking around, <laughs> but nah, but, uh, but now let's get into this, man, because at the end of the day, and for the record, everybody was trying to say, oh, the gun was a 4 5. No, nah, it was a 40 cal, like I said. Confirmation come from a nigga that know more than you and all that. You understand me? I'm talking about this nigga was out there doing this thing back in the day. You understand me? <laughs> yeah, so let's jump into this reaction. Let me let's let's bring a new introduction into Baby Lane so we can get an understanding of Baby Lane. Baby Lane knew Tupac was going to die. You said a lot of them dudes knew it. You see what I'm saying? Whether they knew they was being played because they KPD was gonna get back door we're going gang territory. See the gangsters nowadays compared to the ones in the nineties are night and day. And it's back when you had to be gangster to claim a set. You had to really put in the work. All right, let's stop there though. For y'all that don't understand gang culture, man, let me tell you something. Um some of us, man, like you know. No, a little older now, but who I who I, what I used to look like when I was a kid. Um, I was a nigga, short nigga with the little duck tail, looking like crisscross, and you know I washed the homies lowriders and shit for some change. You see what I'm saying? But a nigga was running around stealing radios and all that shit, you know. But coming up in gang culture, you know, you had to mind somebody. You know what I'm saying? And you know, G niggas was everything. You, if G nigga told you something, it had to be done. If you if it wasn't being done, you didn't show no heart. And you had to get the fuck up out of there. I seen niggas come around and try to do this gangster shit and wasn't with it. Nigga threw the nigga in the trash can and get this nigga up out of here. Exterminate all weak links when it comes to this gang structure. But I want y'all to understand about the police at that time. The police was underpaid. The police was actually corrupt. A lot of people want to put paint where it ain't. Police being corrupt. You see what I'm saying? They, the biggest gang in America. You understand what I'm saying? So when we watch this, understand what it really means to really come up in South Central if you're not from South Central. Let's get it. There was something else in the 90s. The gangs controlled the neighborhoods and the cops only could do so much. A city that had cops picking sides. Yes, cops belonging to certain sets. At Gangsta, if you want to, cops will drop you off in a rival gang territory. See, the gangsters nowadays 
compared to the ones of the 90s or night and day. And it's back when you had to be gangster to claim a set. You had to really put in the work. You had an OG that put you on and could vouch for you. See, Orlando Anderson wasn't no stranger to none of that. He was about his business. He wasn't out there playing with nobody. And it was always on sight. He was young. He was wild. He'll get you in front of a cop if he had to. He'll put in work in one of his baby mom cars if he had to. That was just one person you didn't want to have any problems with at all. Now, Orlando was a very smart kid. He went to school every day and got good grades. I don't think being a crip was ever in a plane, but for one, he hung around a crip neighborhood. And two, all his friends were crips. So around that time, if you wasn't a crip or a blood, but your neighborhood was, you're considered that especially when the other side asked you where you're from. So it made it that you had to pick a side. And as a youngin, being around those friends, he would tag along and get into some trouble, involving in robberies, fighting. He would step up into some gunplay and got into some trouble with the law enforcement early on. He would still graduate high school and still receive his diploma. Now, being out of school would cause him to hit the streets more. He would hang out more often and learn the streets from being around his OGs. He started to make babies and needed to start providing for not just one, but two households. So I want y'all to let's let's go back down memory lane, man. You understand me? Look at those times, bro. Look at those times, man. Look, look. You see, but nigga, you gonna be a victim or a suspect, either or, sink or swim. You see, what I'm saying now. Most people had this idea. Oh uh, yeah, nigga, back in the day, you remember niggas who wear them them starter jackets, nigga, nigga, nigga. Gangsta Nikes with the beeper, nigga. Nigga, I'm talking about them Nike Cortez, nigga. You know what I'm saying? With some dickies, nigga. You know what I'm saying, nigga? Starter jacket, nigga, with the murder one gloves on, nigga. Got that pole in the nigga jeans and, and just ready to activate, nigga. And you know, if you was a weak link, nigga, that was exterminating you. You see what I'm saying? But nigga also was family man. This nigga actually finished high school. You see what I'm saying? People have this perception that oh, oh nigga, all, all nigga do is game bang and all that type of shit. That's not the case. But Baby Lane have made a name to to the point where not only did the streets know his name, but the actual police knew his name. And when you got a name when the police like, what's up, Baby Lane? What you doing? You know, that's when you know you really somebody when, you know, the officer's job, it's a, you know, it's a cat and mouse game. But at the same time, their job is to arrest you. But nigga, they got to respect you. And that's why I say today we got to put some respect on that man name because, you know, a lot of people look at ah, oh, he was shy. He wasn't really with it like that. No, nah, that nigga. He's, he was with it, gang. He was with it. He was with it to the fullest. You see what I'm saying? Um, did he probably want another way out? Absolutely. Nobody wanna, nobody just wanna just stay gang banging for the rest of their life. Why? Because it's pain when you gang bang. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you got your homies. You know what I'm saying, nigga? When everything else fails, you can always go back to your hood. We understand that. But nigga, you know what's out there in them streets, nigga. It's pain, heartache and pain. And nigga, when you out there on them streets, nigga. It's by hook or by crook. Make, make no mistake about it. It's by hook or crook, man. So understand that. So when you young niggas even watching this, no, nigga, if you out there, you better go hard right now because it ain't no trying to go hard when you get older. Let's get to it. Let's go, gang. So since he had two baby mamas, he had to make things happen ASAP. He hit the streets and start hustling on top of getting it the legal way at a lowrider shop. He wanted to tap into the music industry, especially after seeing all the money up north that the Ma Pa Ru was getting with Suge Knight. Now, Suge would change lives with Death Row Records, giving out good paying jobs to the Bloods. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard the Southside Crips and the Ma Pa Ru rivalry went back as far as the 1970s. Now, the incident at Lakewood Mall involving a scuffle with my Pyro member Trayvon Lane. Some say his death row chain was targeted, but the plan was unsuccessful. The chain snatched an attempt angered the set. The dude Trayvon Lane was the actual person that inducted Pac into the set, so you know Pac had to move out to get some cool points with him. Now, Pac was actually the first one to make a move when they spotted Baby Lane in the MGM lobby after the Tyson fight in Vegas. And you know, they put hands and feet on them. Now, Orlando couldn't leave Vegas and go back to Compton without a comeback story. So he got with some of his men and they went out hunting my Pyro members. Now, 
for them to even spot Tupac and Suge in the busy Las Vegas during fight night is crazy to me, but it was on site. The Southside Crips did what they was known to do best, and we already know what happened. Now, we all could say no one deserves to die over a fight. I think what made it worse is when the other guys came over and started riding, but yo, once you put your hands on another man, you must be prepared for what comes with it. Pac didn't know who he was putting his hands on that night, and I'm pretty sure they didn't tell him to move out the way he did. And as far as Orlando, you can hate him all you want, but he did what he was supposed to do as a gangster. Now, after the Tupac incident, Baby Lane started to buzz and his name started to ring. He would be focused more on his record label, and his plan was to use the Tupac incident as publicity to get the label off the ground and sort of compete with Death Row Records. But he was a gangster first and was still... All right, so from my understanding, right, it's so many elements to this game, bro. My understanding is that Trayvon Lane, because mind you, you got to realize, Baby Lane and them Southside Compton Crip niggas caught Trayvon Lane at the Lakewood Mall. You see what I'm saying? Them niggas tried to... Diddy put a bounty out, allegedly. Diddy put a bounty out on all the death row members because what happened at the Soul Train Award in 1996. In 96, remember when them niggas, Suge Knight allegedly had had 60 tickets and had 60 niggas pull up to the Soul Train Award. They wanted Don Cornelius Cruz. Uh, 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 what, what is his name? What, what is my nigga name? Uh, damn, Don Cruz, right? Because they had an argument on who was actually going to uh, open up for for the um uh for the show and Biggie was supposed to open up right but Tupac had allegedly had won the 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 actual Soul Train award and all of that shit plus should want to go holler at Diddy anyway but see this is my thing at some point in time before it even popped off you know rumor is that Suge and Biggie was cool at one point in time you see what I'm saying? And, and, and for me to understand business, you got to go back to what Suge was. Suge was a 28-year-old millionaire. You understand? College educated for number one. That plays a big difference when you come in from the streets. Because that is sink or swim. You got to understand, man. You got to be able to see through limo 10. A lot of niggas be, uh, I don't know. Niggas don't even know they con Miranda rights. Most niggas don't know their constitutional rights. Most niggas don't know anything about niggas know how to go rob an old lady. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or, or go, go, nigga, you get into a fight with your girl, you throw her out on the freeway, you know what I'm saying? Slap her up. That's domestic violence, attempted murder, all that. She could have died by another car. All these different charges. Most people don't understand that. Suge Knight was not just no, he was not just no street nigga. You see what I'm saying? This nigga actually was smart. Just like once again, education. You understand me? Knowledge and wisdom are two different things. Most niggas got wisdom, but a lot of people don't have knowledge. You smell what I'm selling? So when we go back to this, we have to look at these these key players was able to start making money. Baby Lane didn't touch some money before he died. Let's be clear. For number one, how do we know this? Even before that, nigga, his uncle was a big dope dealer. You see what I'm saying? Like, nigga, what kind of nigga? Nigga, you from the same hood as your uncle, nigga. And you a rider, nigga? Nigga, nigga, starter jacket, got the gangster Nikes with the beep around, got the little bitches, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, got a pole on them, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, especially if a nigga had charisma. Uh, yeah, nigga, like, yeah, what? Hey, Keisha, what's happening? Oh, man, you know, yeah, man, I gave you my algebra yesterday, man. I didn't know you was gonna call me back today. Oh, you want me to fuck, huh? You want me to hit that shit? Them niggas, them niggas was raw dog and shit. I'm talking about nigga in, in, in the 90s, nigga, nigga. Nigga wasn't using no fucking rubber. Nigga, 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 throw some jealousy or something. Nigga, come and talk to me. <laughs> nigga, be in there hitting that shit. This bitch got a wolf pussy. In them days, they were mo. Ah! I know I was a kid. My brother, we was on bunk beds and shit. My brother used to smack bitches. Oh, fuck me on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Stay right there. Ooh, here it come. Your mama coming. <laughs> hey, nigga, hey, nigga, it's all right right there. <laughs> At least you ain't like them old hoes and shit. Young man, I had surgery on that knee. I'm a fort. Young man, I'm going to fort. Oh, uh, 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 see, that's what your ass get. I told you I had surgery on that knee. Now you made me wet my panties. <laughs> 
Fuck around. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Back to baby lane one time, baby. <laughs> hey, so understand these dudes was not no crash dummies. Compton at this point in time was at the highest pinnacle you could understand of getting money and coming from poverty and, and facing diversity. You got ad adversity. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? A nigga do got some brains. I'm well trained. You understand me? <laughs> but it shows the difference between the haves and the have nots. When I say have and have nots, I'm talking about somebody who have education and somebody who don't have education. Let's go. Oh, taking care of street business. September 9th, 1996, two days after the Tupac incident, a high rank Southside Crip, Darnell Brim, was hit up several times at a drive by shooting in Compton. He survived the shooting, and it was said that he was one of the guys in the car during the Vegas shooting. And on that same day, two Luther Park Pyro members were hit by 9mm bullets when alleged Southside Crip members riding the Blue Blazer spot. According to testifying on the same on a hood that he don't get along with. He don't get along with that hood, so why would he go testify for free? Nigga, this nigga a gangster. This nigga is a high school graduate. You understand what I'm saying? This nigga ain't out here. Nigga, so, no, I'm gonna just come do it. This, this nigga ain't motherfucking, uh, what's that little nigga name? From, uh, what, what it used to be? This ain't no motherfucking, uh, what's that nigga name? They got booted off his hood and shit. Nigga talking about nigga. He went to the, he went and testified on a nigga who killed his homie for free. Get the fuck up out of here, bro. You know what I'm saying? He ain't that. Yeah, ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. 1998, Orlando Anderson pulls up to a food spot called Mom's Burger. From there, he spots two corner pocket crips at a car wash across the intersection of street, whatever it was. Now, one of the two old money and been ducking them. He leaves the restaurant and goes to the hood to pick up one of his people. When he comes back to the area, the guys are still at the wash. He parks up, exits the vehicle with the vicious press game. At that moment, it was three crips when he approached the crip about the money. He ain't like what was said, and he ain't like what he heard. So, you know, his gun went off. Shots were returned by Jerry J. Dog Stone, hitting Orlando, causing a slow death. Orlando took two of the guys with him, leaving a third wounded. Stone was one of the two that lost their lives. When Orlando went down, his partner grabbed the gun and started shooting. Now that's how you do it, nigga. That, hey, that's how you do it, nigga. That's how you do it. Nigga, you see your whole boy get shot, nigga, you go run. Nigga, he drop his gun, nigga, you pick up, nigga, you blow that nigga down. Back then, if you, if nigga, he got killed, nigga, and you was there, and a gun was on the ground, you didn't do nothing, nigga, you might as well blew your brains out, too, nigga. You ain't no good for nobody, nigga. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is not me trying to advocate, oh, yeah, 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 but, you know, I come from that, and that's what it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? The nigga went down with a fight, nigga. So, this is why I say, listen, y'all got to understand, baby, like, I mean, Orlando Anderson, because I keep saying Baby Lane and Trayvon Lane. Orlando Anderson was not no motherfucking buster, my nigga. He was simply with it. You got to realize at that time, his uncle was a shot caller. When you got family from your hood, it ain't no being no buster, nigga. You ain't go, you mark out, you get your ass whooped around there. You see what I'm saying, nigga? Feelings will get you hurt. Getting your feelings over there, nigga, talking about it ain't fair, nigga. Shut your, get your bitch ass back, nigga. Matter of fact, nigga, hey, nigga, hey, 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 little low dog. Hey, come run that fade with Orlando, man. And then you go squabble up until you get your motherfucking heart ready, nigga. Get your mind up, nigga. Yeah, nigga, I don't want to fight. Hey, rush this nigga. Hey, 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 little blow blow. Nigga, hey, get on, get on that nigga, cuz. Nigga, come on, nigga. Come on, just get in, nigga. Get in. Get in. Come on. All right, that's enough. You got your mind right? Yeah, let's go again then. <laughs> nigga, run it back. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> nigga, I be swollen and shit. And then a nigga, then your uncle come hug you like, hey, that shit hurt me more than it hurt you. You know what I'm saying? You know I love you, right? Hey, it hurt me more than that. You know what I'm saying? This is when your uncle kiss you on your head. You know I love you, right? This shit, it hurt me to do this to you, but you my blood. This You got to survive, nigga. Nigga, this killer phone you. You understand me? That's how the nigga thought that he it. Like, nigga, look at it. Nigga, I be shit like a motherfucker. Nigga, he like, uh-huh. I love you too, huh? <laughs> All right, let's go. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. He died very young. And let's say if Tupac would have made it out of Vegas alive and Baby Lane didn't lose his life, they would have been exactly where Suge is now. 
Pac was out on bail and had open cases during the incident. And he was caught on camera during the assault. So by that Monday, he would have had to turn himself in. Orlando was already super hot on the streets and his name was attached to other murders. Now, I don't wish jail on anybody, but I think prison would have saved both of their lives, if you ask me. Now, no matter what Tupac story you hear, it always ends with Orlando Anderson, two African-American men that look just alike, trying to survive, with one trying to get where the other person is, and the other being successful, wanting to be a part of the other person's world. R.I.P. to both brothers. This story could be a lesson to young black men that made it. And, you know, it seems like it repeats itself in different forms right in front of our faces. You know, with the King Bond incident, the Young Thoth situation. If you're a man, of course, defend yourself at all costs. But success is the best revenge. Now, shout out to all my supporters. If you're watching this, hit that like button. Make sure you turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on my new content. But thanks for watching. I'm all right, y'all. All right, gang. All right, now. All right, man. So like I said, man, um, Baby Lane, man, I was a rider, man. He knew. You see what I'm saying? And I want to thank y'all for pulling up, man. It's so much of this shit. I want y'all to go through this journey with me, man. It's a rabbit hole that we going down, bro. You see what I'm saying? And when I say I'm not going to give up on this, man, so don't y'all give up on me, man. I thank everybody that sent the Super Chat that supports this channel. Um, It helps a lot. Um, You know, I take this serious. And um, I want to give a big shout out and respect to Gene, man, for, you know, you know, hollering back at me like a real one, man. And um, I'll see y'all in the next video, gang. Peace.